Hello and welcome. My name is John Gross. I'm a bone and soft tissue pathologist at Johns Hopkins University. Here we have case number 12, which is uh, about a adult who complained of leg pain. The adult received a plain film radiograph showing a radio density relatively ill-defined in the thigh. This uh, radio density had both lytic, um, sclerotic, and um, blastic um, areas within it um, and has a uh, pattern of mineralization that is quite unusual for myositis ossific hands. The uh, matrix mineralization um, is ill-defined and appears to be uh, attached to the surface of the uh, bone and in the diaphysis. So uh, the concern was significant for a osteosarcoma as uh, post-traumatic or uh, benign entities such as myositis ossificans um, were considered to be less likely given how irregular and ill-defined the matrix mineralization pattern was. The uh, specimen was resected. And here we have a very low power uh, photomicrograph showing a chondroosseous proliferation with various areas of well-formed bone, as well as other areas of uh, nodules of hyaline cartilage and lots of fibroblastic areas that is seen as um, pink, uh, uh, variably cellular um, regions uh, from this low power view. At higher power, the fibroblastic um, component is more evident. Uh, these uh, uh, relatively bland spindle cells here in a background fibromyxoid stroma. Um, some areas of this tumor, I'm sure you appreciated if you clicked on the virtual slide, had um, mitotic activity, uh, which was quite brisk in, in areas. And there was, of course, um, ample neoplastic bone formation. So this is a periosteal osteosarcoma, which is an intermediate grade um, osteosarcoma variant. And briefly, I'd like to discuss some of the osteosarcoma variants with you. We'll start with conventional uh, osteoblastic osteosarcoma. Here is a photomicrograph on the left with these um, anaplastic and malignant tumor cells directly producing mineralized osteoid matrix here, which is this purple pink uh, material uh, that is made directly by the tumor cells, which lack osteoblastic rimming, as you can appreciate. And on the right, at a, um, at a higher power, again, we have anaplastic tumor cells that are variably pleomorphic, which directly produce this mineralized osteoid matrix um, which is very fine, wispy, and lace-like. Uh, next, we have a collage of um, different osteosarcoma subtypes. At the top left, uh, this, is a, this is a spindle cell uh, sarcoma, which is variably uh, pleomorphic, but relatively bland, which is fibroblastic osteosarcoma. And you can see there's various um, foci of more uh, well-formed um, osteoid here without osteoblastic rimming. The top right is example of telangiectatic osteosarcoma, which you can appreciate at low power of these blood-filled cystic spaces, as well as this um, septa of uh, malignant cells, which, are queer, which appear quite blue at low power. Um, it's variably cellular. This is a um, anaplastic sarcoma, which is mitotically active. On uh, uh, radiology, um, certainly one could consider an aneurysmal bone cyst. These tumors may often have um, fluid fluid levels. However, this is much more aggressive um, than a um, aneurysmal bone cyst. The amount of matrix mineralization may be very focal. And again, um, emphasizing the value of radiographic correlation as well as sampling. The bottom left 
um, is an example of chondroblastic osteosarcoma. Um, here's seen here in the middle with a little focus of um, osteosarcoma, uh, as well as it's uh, surrounded by a fibroblastic um, uh, tumor. And then the bottom right is an example of giant cell rich osteosarcoma with these malignant tumor cells producing mineralized osteoid as well as these admixed multinucleated giant cells. Here we have an example of small cell osteosarcoma on the left and on the right, um, the left being a uh, low power, the right being more intermediate to um, high power. And you can see the purple pink uh, matrix mineralization all throughout within this filigree pattern of these primitive small um, blue cells. And um, on the right, you can really appreciate this uh, uh, matrix mineralization um, better with these uh, relatively uh, small, primitive, um, but uh, a little bit of uh, cytologic atypia to these cells, uh, which directly produce this matrix mineralization. And uh, the last variant that we'll um, discuss um, in this segment is chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma, which is another very rare um, osteosarcoma subtype. On the left, you can see all the mineralized um, matrix and in a relatively pink tumor. And on the right, you can see that these um, epithelioid uh, tumor cells really do resemble chondroblastoma, some of which are even kidney bean shaped, reniform, some of, them, some of which even have nuclear grooves. Mitotic activity um, is seen. Um, this tumor has matrix mineralization seen with this purple uh, uh, matrix pattern here of the calcium um, deposition. And, uh, and of course, this is a much more aggressive uh, tumor than one would um, allow in a uh, conventional chondroblastoma, which is, of course, a, a benign tumor. Osteosarcoma is the most common non-hematopoietic primary bone tumor with a bimodal age distribution in patients younger than age 20 and greater than age 60. Generally occurs in the metaphysis of long bones, often around the knee, but can affect any bone. Radiographically, osteosarcomas are generally ill-defined mixed lytic and blastic tumors with a uh, often having a Codman's triangle, which is when the periosteum is lifted or elevated by the advancing tumor front. Osteosarcomas generally grow rapidly, which is in contrast to conventional chondrosarcomas, which is a more slowly or indolent growing tumor. Osteosarcoma is defined by the production of malignant osteoid, which is often lace-like and it lacks osteoblastic rimming. Uh, osteosarcomas are often invasive and have permeative growth. Uh, the majority of osteosarcomas are treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, there are a couple subtypes um, that do not uh, generally have uh, recommendations for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which uh, we'll discuss in other videos. Um, lung is the most common site of metastatic disease in osteosarcoma. The prognosis of osteosarcoma is variable uh, with uh, conventional osteosarcomas having 50 to 80% survival. The low grade variants um, have a relatively good prognosis with greater than 90% survival. Now, um, our patient in this um, case here has an example of periosteal osteosarcoma, which is an intermediate grade, grade two of three, chondroblastic bone forming sarcoma, which arises on the surface of the bone. It typically arises underneath the periosteum. It's rare, less than 2% of all osteosarcomas. Uh, the tumor encircles the long bone in about 50% of cases. It's often in the diaphysis of the femur or tibia. Uh, in our patient, it was in the diaphysis. Um, many osteosarcomas are metaphyseal, uh, but this is an example of a diaphyseal osteosarcoma. Um, you may see a perpendicular periosteal reaction radiographically, which is described as hair on end. Um, periosteal osteosarcoma will lack MDM2 and CDK for amplification with the differential diagnosis being PAR, P-A-R, PAR osteal osteosarcoma, which is a low grade variant of osteosarcoma discussed in other videos. And because this is not a conventional chondrosarcoma, um, although it's chondroblastic, uh, periosteal osteosarcoma does not have IDH mutations. Thank you.